Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create a sphere of dirt in the style that you would see in Dragon Ball Z and all kinds of other anime stuff when somebody's getting very cross and they're starting to power up, you get this kind of circle of dirt spinning around them that shows that, you know, all kinds of powerful, exciting things are happening and that it's gonna get very serious. And you can then take this into Flash and trace over it and add some detail and correct some of the uh, kind of faults that we've got here where we're not quite getting an entire spike. You can easily tidy those up in Flash. So I'll show you how I've done this. If you haven't seen my intro to the wave warp effect, please do check that out before doing this tutorial, otherwise it will be quite confusing. So what we're gonna do is, let's take a look first at this pre-comp that we've got called wave warp. Double click on it to take a look at what's inside. What we've got is two shape layers, one that is a mask that's just some black, just to get rid of this bit at the bottom, and a white rectangle with this wave warp effect applied to it. So essentially we've just got two rectangles. We want to turn that wave warp effect on because it's a sawtooth. We get this nice kind of spiky effect here, like the sort of smoke or dust clouds that you would see in anime. We've got a wave height of 54, wave width of 43, the direction, I've just waggled this around until it's in the direction I want. So this number's fairly arbitrary, it's one times 60 degrees. Wave speed is three, so it's really moving very fast. And because it's a positive number, it's moving to the right, as you can see there. I haven't got any pinning or any phase, and I've put the anti-aliasing quality to high. So that's nice and simple. It's just two rectangles, one's white and one's black. The black is masking off the white, and the white has this wave warp effect on it. When we jump to our main composition, you can see that it looks really quite different. It's like it's wrapped around a sphere. Well, if you said that, you'd be quite astute because this effect that I've used to create this is called Sphere Eyes. And it's been around in After Effects for quite a long time. So if I start typing in Sphere Eyes into this box here, you can see there it is. And all Sphere Eyes does is it makes something wrap around a sphere. It doesn't use the 3D in After Effects. It's just built into the effect. So you don't need to turn 3D on. In fact, if you do, it will probably mess this effect up. So if I turn Sphere Eyes off, you can see it's exactly the same as it was before. So these are the settings I've got in my sphere eyes. The rotation, uh, the X is set to 344, and both of the others are left the same. If you mess around with the rotation, you get it to look like that. So it's spinning around the center. You could have it up here. You could have it to the side. You could, do, you could have it up here. You could do whatever you wanted. You could spin the Y rotation around a little bit. Maybe you could hide that floor that we've got a little easier that way. There we go. And the Z rotation is similar. So you can really have this any way you want. So I'm just gonna undo all of that. So there we go. In fact, I might just rotate it so we can't see that floor. And then it makes our animation a little bit more perfect. Marvelous. Let's take a look at the radius. This is just how big it is. You can make it bigger or smaller. It's totally up to you. The offset just moves it around. Uh, the lighting. I wanted this bit at the back to be a little grayer. So I think I left and messed around with the light direction so that this back part was darker. There you go. That's nice. Uh, you can change the light height. So something like that makes the background quite distinctive. 
Uh, you can change the intensity. There we go. So the higher the intensity, the more block the colors will be. Uh, shading, I think I left that as it was. And it's using the reflection map of the original pre-comp there. So I wouldn't get too caught up in there in the shading. I didn't really bother with it in this example. And you can see that our loop is just before one second. It's just one frame before one second there. Even though it's going really fast, because it's an even number like three, it still applies to the same rules as if it was on one or two, as long as it's a whole number. If that's sounding unfamiliar, again, do check out that original intro to the wave warp effect. So now we've got something really nice and kind of clean, we can export this to a PNG sequence. Just before we do that, uh, it's worth checking out the render here. If you want to make your life really easy, instead of rendering it on full, you could render the outside and the inside in two separate renders so that they're easier to trace and keep separate on two different layers so you can mess about with them a bit more and uh, play around with them. So to render that out, you can go to composition, add to the media encoder queue or in After Effects CC or add to the render queue in CS6 and below. And you need to set it to render a PNG sequence at 25 frames a second. Then if we jump into Flash, you can see this is my trace of that spinning circle of dirt. And I've made it into a graphic symbol. So if I double click on that, you can see that I've got 16 frames in total, each one lasting for two frames each. So again, you can see we set the posterized time in After Effects to eight frames a second. So that's giving us this nice limited style of animation. And I've separated the front from the back. So that's the front, that's the back. If you render them out separately, that's a lot easier than trying to pull them apart using the lasso tool in Flash. And I've just colored them in two slightly different colors. If you wanted to, you could apply a gradient to either part, radial gradient or a linear gradient. Maybe you could give it a nice kind of brown on one side and then sort of pinkier on the other. I think I've got too many colors there. There we go. It's a bit more subtle. And you can use the gradient transform tool to spin it around. I have to zoom out a little bit. There we go. like that. Perhaps have a slightly darker colour there. Maybe something more like that. There we go. And you could do the same for the front. Just gives it a little bit of extra kind of subtlety. Obviously you want to make the front a little bit lighter as well to give it that contrast and that depth. So there you go. That's how you make a spinning circle of dirt using After Effects and Flash. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.